Before we get into today's video, I do want to let you guys know that this video is for educational purposes only. Please remember to be kind to everybody everywhere in your everyday life, in your home, in the grocery store, and especially in the comment section down below. Please do not show hate to anybody, anywhere. Good morning, my lovelies, my beauties, my friends. My name is Christina and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really hope that you will subscribe, stick around, take a chance and hearing some things that I have to say. And if you are a returning subscriber, y'all already know, y'all are my babies. So good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody doing today? I hope you all are having an amazing day. I hope you all had a wonderful weekend. I hope everybody's feeling good and getting geared up for the holidays. Is everybody ready? Hmm? In today's video, we are going to be talking about a case that I feel like nobody can really prepare for, the case of William Jones. Before we get into it though, I did want to let you guys know if you don't already know. Hi, my name is Christina. I do have a second channel, which is Casually Christina. It's way more casual over there. I also have a Patreon. My Patreon is for 18 and up. And over there, we talk about more personal story times. We go live over there. And I also have a $2 tier where all of the true crime stuff that cannot go on to YouTube due to their terms and policies, that goes over on my $2 tier. Just make sure you read the about section and what each tier offers before you join. I also have a Facebook, an Instagram, a Snapchat, and a like to know it page. And those are all linked down in the description box if you'd like to come and check me out. Okay, so in order to get towards William Jones, we need to start with Christopher Neal. Christopher Neal was born on April 28th, 1997 in Texas and was the son of Dan and Deborah Neal. Christopher grew up in Texas and was well known at his high school. He had an energetic personality and loved playing baseball. After high school, Chris joined the Navy and took pride in his work as an aviation electronics technician. This job gave him the opportunity to travel around the world and make friends everywhere he went. Chris met his wife, Haley Coe, while they were both both attending Navy A School in Pensacola, Florida. Now, Chris's career really took off when he became a government contractor, continuing his career in the aviation industry. He was hired at the Duncan Aviation in Battle Creek, Michigan. And after leaving the Navy, Chris became a real estate agent. So guys, I'm Chris Neal. I graduated from Quillen Ford High School in 2015. And, uh, after graduation, I joined the Navy, did two tours overseas with the Patrol and Reconnaissance Squadron out of Oak Harbor, Washington. And uh, then I went to school to be a realtor, and now I work for Caldwell Banker Coochie Real Estate. I joined the military right out of high school. It was kind of something I did on the spot, and it ended up being one of the best decisions ever. You know, I got to see some really cool places in the world. Also ended up with a beautiful daughter and an amazing wife out of it. Chris also had a passion for cars and for snowboarding, and any chance that he got, he would spend his time on the mountains in the snow. All of Chris's friends and family say that he was very devoted to his family. He was a kind-hearted guy, and really everybody loved to be around him. By 2019, 22-year-old Christopher and his wife Haley and their two-year-old daughter were living in Kalamazoo, Michigan, and couldn't have been happier together. They had just moved into a new home together and had high hopes for their future. And Christopher and Haley had just found out that they were pregnant with their second child. They were over the moon excited. They had their two-year-old baby girl. Christopher and Haley had already done quite a bit of traveling. They were a happy, young, and lively couple, and they were just excited about life and all the future had to hold for them. Sadly though, Christopher would not get to see all of the wonderful things that they had planned for their future. On Sunday, December 1st, 2019, Christopher and his pregnant wife Haley and their two-year-old daughter were laying around watching TV when at about 10 p.m an unknown man came through their back door and held them hostage. This man had them hostage for 40 minutes. Now again, they didn't know him. This was completely unexpected, out of nowhere, and in vision. Like they're laying down, watching TV, relaxing, a nice family evening when a complete stranger gets into their house and holds them hostage. They were terrified. And this is when Christopher was able to call 911. 911, what is the location of your emergency? 
Yes, there's a there's a man in my house right now. What is? Hold on, stop for a second. Whoa, well, right, there's a man in my house. I need you to give me your address first. Sixty three hundred Proctor Avenue. Is that a house, house or an apartment? House at the end of the street. Why are you in my house, bro? Tell me when you talk to him. You don't get phone. Why are you in my house, though? Remember, how many other people are in your house? It's me, my wife, and our daughter. How old is your daughter? She's two. Two? Okay. Yeah. Do you have any idea who he is? We do go, no. Here, go that way. No, go that way. So he is. The same right there. Let me push you. No, no. Let my wife come I, 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 okay. I'm not going to harm you guys. All right? I promise. Take my hand. I'm going to call you in Jones. You can go. I'm not going to harm you. Where is William at right now? He stayed next to me in my hallway. Okay, are we still on speakerphone? We still are. He's right here. Okay. William. Yes, ma'am. William. Okay. Can Christopher, can Christopher and his wife and daughter step outside? No. Yeah, what? I'm not. Ma'am? What? They're safe. They're safe? They're safe. They're going to stand right here with you. What are you doing in their house? I told you there were shots fired. Where were shots fired at? Going on, uh, uh, old 37, or uh, old Kentucky, uh, coming into Bellevue. What's that? Like coming into Bellevue. Bellevue. Stop right here with me, man. No, I ain't going anywhere. You're going there with me, man. Bro, turn the light on, please. William. Turn the light on. William. Yes, man. What do you know? What are you trying to have them do? He's coming in the room with you. That's it. Why is he going in the room with you? Why are you locking that door? Don't lock that door, bro. You are right, man. I just gave you my word, man. You straight. I get, I get what you're saying, but you got two guns, bro. You're you got two guns? I'm trying to put it crazy, man. I'm oh, not man. doing anything. Well, I'm yeah. in my house, man. I'm sorry, man. William, listen to me. Why are you sitting here in the first place? William, can you listen to me? Yes, ma'am. I need you to put those guns down because I've got, I've got officers that want to help you. I have officers that want to help you and keep you safe, so I need you to put those guns down. Who are you, man? I'm 911. I've got help for you. I need you to put those guns down so that they can get you the help that you need. I want, I want police here so I can leave. The police are there, William. The police are there. No, they're not. They are there. No, they're, not. I, they're there. I've got a lot of deputies there. Man, listen, I'm not harming you, I promise. My word. My wife just got threatened, man. I didn't hear you, bro. I'm gonna send you. I hear you. They got threatened last night. Okay, I get you, bro. I'm not harming you, or your children, or your wife. I'm gonna transfer this line, so do not hang up on me, okay? I'm not, I'm not going to. Alright, just a minute for me. Hey, William. William. Yes. Hey, this is Joe from the Sheriff's Department. How are you, man? Glad you bad for the new door. Don't come through that door. Okay. We're not going to come through the door, man, but I just want to talk to you and find out what's going on. Don't come through that door. Glad you bad for the that door, man. Well, I'm not even up by the door, man. I'm outside the house. Where else? I'm in the house. house. Stop playing against me, man. What, what's, what's got you all worked up today, man? By some miracle, Christopher was able to convince William, the guy that had broken to their home, to let his pregnant wife Haley and their two-year-old daughter leave the room. After the two left the room, this is when Haley called 911. Okay, and what do you, what's going on right now? I don't know, I'm upstairs, all I can hear is them like slightly talking. Do you still have him on the phone? Yep, so we have, um, so I'm talking to you, and then my other call taker is talking to someone else as well. Do you know who is in the home? No, we have no idea. You have no idea who it is? Yeah, he's barging our back door with two guns. He just barged in? Yeah, and he has my husband locked in a room with him. He won't let my husband or me out, so I be We have everyone on the phone right now. We have your husband, you, and um, the male that's in your home as well. I just heard a really loud noise. I think it was gunfire. You heard a loud noise? Yeah. The police officers are making entry right now, so same call for me, okay? 
About 45 minutes after the 911 phone calls were made, the SWAT team arrived. As soon as they arrived, gunshots were heard from within the home. Officers outside of the home tried calling Christopher's phone to check on him, but it wasn't Christopher that answered the phone. This is when the police were able to enter the home. They were able to get Haley and the couple's daughter out of the house, and their body cameras show what happened next. Tomorrow night, command on deck. Hey, we're going to be establishing a react rescue team at the one four corner. Four six four has got a shot fired. Sounded like it's coming from the SLB corner. Uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, let's fucking go. Tell the police, anyone inside! Let me see your hands! Now. Let me see your hands! Hold on, hold, hold. Let me clear. Clear this. Clear this here. They're all behind us. Hey, man. Hey, what's your name, man? Hey, this is this is Joe out here, okay? Man, we don't want anything bad to happen. We're not gonna hurt you. Say that again, man. I I can't do that. What's his name? William. Is someone in there with him? Yes, Chris. Yeah, purple. Where's the rest of the family? Can get them out. Upstairs, I believe. Don't go in front of that door. Bypass behind him. Ciao. We're, we're not going to do anything, man. Just talk. Please go, man. We're not doing anything, okay? Can, can you drop? Can you drop long guns so we got someone with shield and pistol? I want you to have shield. I don't want to have two Julio! Get that shield up. William, tell me what's going on. Jones? Yep. Bring that shield over here, man. Okay. Bring it around. William, please talk to us, brother. Hey. Stop shooting, man. Stop shooting, please William. Stop shooting us. right now. Don't stand up, on. Joey. Don't stand up. William, what's going on? I'm hit. I'm hit. I'm hit. I'm hit. Yeah. Yeah. I'm hit. Down. William let off many rounds. These rounds ended up taking the life of Christopher and also ended up injuring uh, three different officers. And the officers did not return the fire because they were worried about injuring Christopher. All three officers were admitted to the hospital where they received treatment and they were released and eventually recovered. As the police entered the room that William had Christopher in, this is when they saw William jumping out of the window and they were able to get him there. They arrested William. He was taken to the hospital where the doctors noted that William seemed intoxicated and he really wasn't making any sense. Once William was in custody, he was identified as 35 year old William Jones. He had been released from jail five days prior to this incident. He had literally just gotten out of jail and some of his charges included burglary and home invasions. William was charged with 19 charges including murder, 
home invasion, unlawful imprisonment, assault with intent to kill, and multiple charges related to the injuries of the officers as well as felony firearm charges. At Williams' arraignment, he had the nerve to act like, hey, I wanna go ahead and plead guilty. Can you go ahead and plead me guilty so you can send me off to prison? Y'all, when I heard this, it irked me. I, I can't imagine, listen. If I plead guilty to all these right now, can I get a chance today so I can hurry up and go to prison for life like everybody wants or what? Y'all, that is, that is so infuriating to hear for multiple reasons. One, anybody that know, that's been in jail or has been sent off to prison, you know that prison is actually better in a lot of ways than jail. So what, in my mind, William was saying there was, can you hurry up and, and get me sent there because, so I can have an easier time than here in the jail? That's the first thing. Second thing is zero remorse from this man's voice. So I don't care if he seemed intoxicated at the house or not. He's sober now, like, ugh. let's keep going. A psychological evaluation was performed on William and it was determined that he was competent to stand trial. William's trial began on June 13th of 2022 and was a week and a half long. During the trial, the jurors found out that William was smoking meth and had went nuts. I, I don't know. I, that, that's what. That's the way it was presented, that he was smoking that stuff. He had went cuckoo, and then he did this. The jurors also learned that before William ended up at Chris and Haley's house, he was actually the passenger in another car and was on that mess and spazzed out and ended up shooting up the car that he was in. Can you imagine how terrifying that was? But who knows the state of mind everybody that was in the car, but it was still probably terrifying. So he goes cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, okay, off that mess, shoots up the car, jumps out the car, and runs into the back door of these people's homes, and then holds them hostage along with this two-year-old baby girl, a pregnant woman, and Christopher, who is truly a hero. Haley, the wife, gave a very emotional testimony at the trial. Crying and I couldn't make her happy. Were you afraid as to whether or not the defendant might hear that? Yes, they kept shushing her and shushing her, but she'll stop. What were you afraid might happen if the defendant heard you or your daughter upstairs? That he might know what room we were in, and that, like, possibly that we could be shot through the floor or whatever, or he would come upstairs, or we could just get hurt. And on June 24th of 2022, the jury deliberated for three hours before they found him guilty and he ended up getting life without the possibility of parole. So he got his wish to go to prison and Haley gave birth to their baby boy. Oh my gosh, that's so sad. And she named her son after Christopher. So this is just heartbreaking. Absolutely heartbreaking. I just don't know how you prepare for that. Like... This man was so brave that he was concerned with getting his wife and his daughter out of the room and some way, somehow, by some miracle, he was able to talk William into letting them to leave out of the room and thank God that he did because he did end up killing Christopher and then she gave birth to a baby boy, which, ugh, you guys, so sad, so sad. If there is a silver lining in this, just think about when those two kids grow up, they're going to be sad. They're going to, they're, they're, ugh. but at least they will know that they are here because their dad was so brave. Like he, he served our country and then he served his family until his, his dying breath. Have y'all heard about this? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Other than that, I love you guys. Thank y'all for watching and I'll see y'all in the next video. Love you guys. Bye.